We stretch a muscle that is spastic. Rationale is a little bit different. You don't want to do kind of just like a prolonged hold that you would do with a, just a muscle that straight up has tightness in it. You want a movement component to it. Movements to help restore appropriate lengthening of a muscle and minimize that recoil or that reactive kind of contraction. So how do you do that? You go through movements where you're repetitively, smoothly and slowly lengthening that muscle. We're gonna do that for the bicep and we're gonna do that for the wrist. Now, the very important thing when it comes to the arm versus the leg, many of the muscles that become spastic are what we call two joint muscles. So the bicep is a two joint muscle and what that means is you can block the arm in extension and you can work on shoulder movements and you're gonna be getting that component, right? You're gonna be getting that rhythmic lengthening of that muscle, getting the muscle used to lengthening. Because we're blocking the elbow, we're kind of hopefully training it to not do that, do its action, which is elbow flexion. So we lengthen or we uh, block the elbow in extension and we move the shoulder and that way we are lengthening that bicep muscle, but we're putting a block on the main action of that muscle to try and kind of minimize or discourage the muscle from doing that involuntary contraction. Same with the wrist. If you block the wrist in extension, you can do some elbow movement, some lengthening here, and you are lengthening the forearm muscles, which part of those forearm muscles are the wrist flexors, which pull that hand down in like this, which many of you are familiar with because that's what your uh, hand looks like. That is due to spasticity. And again, it's probably a combination of spasticity in those wrist flexors, but also tightness in those wrist flexors as well.